Presta Gamakatsu, sponsors of the UK Angling Championships. So here we are, the start of another absolutely fantastic tournament. This is round one of the Cresta Gamakatsu UK Angling Championship. For 33 years, this event has been running. Believe me when I say it is one of the most sought after titles in the whole of the competition calendar. This is gonna be a brilliant day. Now this event attracts the cream of the crop. Some of the big matches out there, they winner takes the pot competitions, but this one, you know what, it's run over four legs. You've got to be consistently good. Who does it attract? Well, just have a look around me. Some of the biggest names in competition fishing are here. Due to a calendar clash, the defending champion, Zach Brown, can't make it this year. So whatever happens, we will have a new champion by the end of the tour. The big question is who that will be. So, Mark, back again for another go? Yeah, another go, yeah, I'll have a, uh, I'm gonna try my best again this year. Champion in 2012, seven years ago. Yeah, it's a long time now. Uh, I, had a little, I had a little chance last year and uh, didn't go according to plan first. The last round was horrible to me on the draw, but, you know, it, it dampens, it, it, it's not as bad, because you've, obviously you've had it before, so it, the, it hurts a bit, but not as much as if you've never got it, so. Well, Mike, you had a brilliant round here last time. Just pipped by Zach Brown for the overall win. He's not here. You are. What would it mean to win this title? Uh, a lot. It's 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 it's, it's huge. Um, last year I came close. I thought it was going to be my my, my uh, year last year. Um, obviously, me and Zach tied on points, which um, and fair play to me, fished a fantastic uh, series. Um, so yeah, let's let's hope I can go one better this year. Emma, UK champs big event this isn't it? It is, it's a massive event and I've not actually fished it since 2009 um, so I'm really really looking forward to it. I've, because of work commitments and things it's not allowed me to do it um, so yeah I'm really looking forward to this one. What would it mean to win it? Oh it'd be amazing obviously my dad's won it um, three times so to win a title that he's won just, it'd just be incredible so it would mean a lot. Mark what does it take to win this event? Hey, you've just got to try your hardest to keep it cool um, and obviously don't overcomplicate things, keep things as simple as you can and uh, do what you're best at doing, that's my belief. We know these events, there's a top, top anglers on here and it's not an easy event to win at all so you've got to be really calm, cool and concentrated as my dad would say and uh, just give it your all. So all the runners and riders are gathering together now in readiness for the draw. And the way that the draw works is very much on a random basis. We've got 80 anglers here. Now in previous years, we've had eight sections of 10, but because there's some new lakes available here and they only seat six anglers, it's been changed to six peg sections. Now that's gonna be a really interesting twist in this tournament because what it means is that if you come at the bottom end of your section, you'll get six points rather than 10 which will mean later on in the year, it will be a lot tighter. And believe me, this is a very, very tight event anyway, but it will be a lot tighter at the top towards the back end. Everyone's gathering behind me now. What they will do is walk up to the draw bag, put their hand into the bucket, pull out a peg number, and that is where they will fish for the five hours of this event. Remember, it's a five hour event as well, from one until six. That has a big effect because that extra hour at the end sometimes means that there can be a big fish sprint at the back end of the day. Now, not only do they not know where they're going, but they don't know who they're fishing against. 80 anglers, as I've said, but they'll be in sections of six, so they'll have another five anglers in the section. They don't know who they're gonna be. You can have England internationals right next door to Sunday League club anglers as well. Who knows where they're gonna get? It's gonna be a really interesting draw, this one.
So joining me on the bank today is Mark Murdoch. Now, Mark, you are well and truly involved in this scene. You also know a bit about the Glebe. What a brilliant venue it is. Yeah, it's a fantastic venue. Um, lots of fish, nine lakes. They're all stuffed with fish. And, and obviously, we've got a load of good anglers here to fish today. We always expect big weights here, don't we? Big weights, 200 pound plus, is not unusual here at the, on these lakes. And all of the lakes can produce that weight. You know, it's been really interesting actually as well that, that we have the nine lakes. In previous years when we've been here, I think there's been six. But we've got nine, which means, firstly, new lakes, but secondly, a lot more space for everyone. Yeah, you, we just look around and you can see the space where we're standing now. I mean, there's 40 yards between two anglers, um, loads of space, and that means more fish. Them pegs do sometimes dominate on this venue. I'm looking down lake one here, peg 30, wind's blowing in it, end peg could smash it up today. Well, Mike McMillan was down there last year. He had an absolute whale of a time and it just carried on going and carried on going and carried on going. He put a really, really big weight together down there. So that's going to be one of the favoured areas. I'm going to put you on the spot now. Who's your money on? I said peg one earlier, but I'm going to go with 30 on lake one. Are you really? Yeah. Right, that's an interesting. And I don't care who's on it. Okay. I think it's so you're going to bet on the peg, right? Well, I'm, I think I'm going to go uh, that's a good one. I'm going to go the complete opposite end of the scale. Chris Barley is very, very good here. Uh, everybody that's in the scene knows who Chris Barley is. He's drawn a decent peg down the bottom end. I think he's on lake nine as well. So you'll go on one, I'll go on nine. We'll see what happens later on. So we're going to kick off now behind Kaylee Smith, peg 22, Lake 1. Of course, Kaylee, very experienced match angler, England international. Out in South Africa for the World Games this year, England got a magnificent bronze. Kaylee got individual bronze as well. She's well up for this. Yeah, you now Kaylee's started short. She's uh, going to try and nick a few fish on the pole. Um, so she's just going to be patient for the first 15, 20 minutes, I'd imagine, and see what happens really and just settle herself into the match. There we go, and she's in, bang. Yeah. And just looking down the section, no one's had a bite yet. So no, I mean, I noticed uh, about 10 seconds before a float just brushed, and I'm sure she knew there was a fish there. So, uh, yeah, looks a proper fish. She's just gonna take her time, nice and steady. I mean, this could be a three pound, or it could be a 17, 18 pound in here. She's just gonna take her time, get it in the net, and that's gonna settle her down. There she comes, there she goes, there that's we it. go. It's in, well it, done, Kaylee. That. That's a great start. Oh, oh. there we go. Yeah, and that's a good five pound fish, that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a brilliant. You know. And this is how you build weight on these pegs. You know, that six of them an hour, that's 30, yeah, 30 that's, pound that's, an hour. That's the thick end of a 200 pound bag, yeah. isn't it? That brilliant, brilliant start there. Yeah. Definitely want to watch this one. Dave Burley, peg 25, late one. He's attached to a bit of a tank at the moment as well. He's got that under control. It led him a bit of a merry dance earlier, but he's in. And of course, Dave won match this last year. Yeah, the big Dave Burley. That carp's got no chance against big Dave, really. I mean, he upped it and it shot off towards the far bank, but Dave soon had it under control and uh, in the net. Good size, another five pounder. Yeah, they're all decent sized fish in here, you know, but it's a matter of who can put a few together, so. Uh, that's a decent start, we're 15 minutes in, so... Here's a man you've always got to keep an eye on, Andy Kinder, the man that organises this event at the moment, and he's, uh, he's stuck with his method for the first 15 minutes of just pinging over to that far side. Yeah, I mean, it's a favoured method here on these pegs, is you've just got to keep throwing that feeder, keep throwing it, and eventually they'll, uh, they'll turn up. And I've watched Andy for the last sort of five minutes, and he's been chucking every 30 seconds. And Andy's well known for catching big weights on the feeder here. Very smooth angler as well, isn't he? Very, very smooth angler. Yeah, he's caught a lot of fish on this method, so he knows everything about it. What's Andy doing there now? He's just... Right, well, Andy's fishing maggots on the hook, and he is fishing a bit of pellet and a bit of ground bait in his feeder, which he's just squeezed in. So he's got three or four maggots on the hook, and you can see it's a very, very sparse bait table he's got, considering looking at some of the bait tables, the, the options that people have taken. And he's got some ground bait, 
some small pellets, some big pellets and some maggots. That's it. He's not got many eggs and they're in one basket there. He fishes it so often, he knows that it'll work. He's got the confidence in it that it will work. Well, he went wrong, Mark. He's off to an absolute flyer down here. I think this is fish number six. Now. Yeah, he's had six, I think, and he's he's fishing just over the pipe to his right with ground bait and maggots. I just had a quick chat with him, with Ward, and um, yeah, he's had he's had six fish, and uh, fantastic that you know a, a guy that's never fished the UK champs comes and draws a great peg. And I mean, to be fair, he's going to have a great day's fishing. On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries. Angling in the Northwest. On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries. Angling in the Northwest. Well, this is where one of the big battles is taking place throughout the course of the day, and it looks like the leader at the moment is Pem Brighting. Yeah, Pem's just thrown the feeder out, it's gone straight round and it looks a decent fish. He's always very, very consistent, this lad, isn't he? You know, the, some of the weights that you see him put together from places that shouldn't produce weights like that are incredible. Yeah, no, Pem's been a great angler since he was 13, 14. And, uh, yeah, he doesn't make mistakes. Of course, hails from Essex. A bit of a travel, a bit of a trek for him up here, but it's worth it. He's won this tournament once before. He'd love to put his name on that title again. Yeah. And at the moment, it looks, Rob, as if it's just putting a few fish in the net and having a few, a bit of a wait to go into the last few hours. And that's, uh, as we've just said, really, it's just about putting fish in the net and uh, picking a few fish off here and there, and that's what Craig's done. Pemb is just nosing ahead at the moment, but if Craig's responding like this, then he's going to be all over him very, very soon. Yeah, it doesn't take long to put a weight on that tip, uh, in your net with that tip. Uh, so the bites are pretty quick. I think that was in the water for less than 30 seconds and round it went. So uh, 
we're an hour in and that initial spurt of activity for the first 15 minutes the nerve settlers they've all they've all gone now the, the the pack is settling if this was a race they're just settling into their little groups getting their pace now aren't they yeah everybody's just settling into their own methods what they're happy with and what they think is gonna potentially win them the section first and then if it's good could potentially get them in the frame or win the match so that's what they're doing at the moment that's a, that's a reasonable fish, that's a few pounds. Yeah, that's a four pound, four, five pound fish. Well, this is uglies. So called because supposedly the fish in here are the ugly ones, but you know what, they're the bigger ones and there's a lot of very big fish in this lake up to well over 20 pounds. I think 28 pounds is the record. So it's going to be a slow game, this one. It's not the sort of place where they can have a fish race for little ones. Well, there's a sign that things aren't going particularly smoothly. Andy Power on his feet behind his box. Yeah, and I haven't seen a lot of fish caught on here, Rob, um, which is a bit worrying, but yeah, Andy's Andy Power, one of the best anglers in the UK and he's up and he's putting new, a different rig on. He's doing something, he's obviously not happy and he's changing his rigs. Everybody knows Andy Power and it only takes, you know, two hours and Andy can win a match. Yeah. So. It's an interesting one this one because just directly opposite Andy, on the opposite bank underneath us, is Tommy Pickering. Tommy's probably the most experienced angler in the whole field today probably one of the most respected anglers in the UK and I've watched him and he's chucked the tip out and he's waiting for bites he's just gonna wait and wait and he's probably waiting to see if other people start catching so it's a bit of a chess game this one I think bottle job isn't it just got to sit there and sit tight and I know that it will suit Tommy Pickering absolutely down the ground but it will also suit the man that we're looking at at the moment the man in blue down there with his cap on concentrating looking at the opposite end of the island and that's Mike McMillan. Second overall last year, he won at this venue too. So he knows his stuff. Yeah, he's fishing a bomb to the corner of the island and just pinging some pellets and seeing what develops really. The three guys to his left have been fishing the pole. One's gone onto the tip now, but they're not catching much. No, there's a big fish just cruising off the front of that island at the moment. Not far from where Mike's putting his bait in. Now there's quite a few fish cruising around. They certainly seem to be around this flatter water over here. Lake four now, Nick Speed, down on the end peg, the end that doesn't have too much wind. There's quite a few fish stacking up around the edges now and he had a bit of a slow start for the first hour but he's managed to get into a rhythm now and he's got a half decent carp and he's a bit concerned it might be foul hooked. This will be number nine on his list. We hear at the other end of the lake there's been 12 caught. So it's the end pegs on this section that seem to be doing the business at the moment. Chris van der Fleet in the middle has caught one or two as well. Oh. I thought he was going to have a swipe at that yet, but he's just going to wait until it comes up under a little bit more control before just dipping that net underneath it. There's a bit of time invested into this fish now, so he's going to definitely want to get this one in. It's running him round a little bit, this one, and this will be Nick's ninth fish, and it seems to be opposite ends of the lake at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, as I said before, it's like end pegs do dominate in some respects and it's always dependent upon the wind and where the fish want to be in the wind. Yeah, and that's going to be a tricky one to get in, but he looks like he's going to get it. Yep, he's got it. He'll be very happy that one's coming. It's another four pounds and it seems to be the average size of the fish in this pond, around about four pounds. They're not quite as big as some of the others. But once again, you can build a big weight up with four pound fish coming in pretty steadily. Yeah, so I mean, we've got Matt Goodall on 66. Uh, he said he's had 12 fish, but I'm not sure how big they are. Chris van der Fleet's had eight. He's playing one at the moment, Chris van der Fleet. Yeah, he's, he's really? got one on the tip at the moment, and then obviously Nick's got nine. 
And let's have a look at this fish off Chris van der Fleets now. He's smack bang, more or less in the middle of the section. Six pegs, of course, he is number four in this line. And Chris is starting to put a bit of a weight together down here now. Regular in the UK Champs, he's been in this event almost every year for the last six or seven years. Hails from Essex. He's a good angler, is Chris? He knows what he's doing. It's a nice fish, that. It's a good five, six, five pounder. Might be even more, actually. Matt Goodall here on peg 66. This is a well-known peg. Um, and obviously, another end peg. It seems to be both ends of this at the moment. Nick Speed at the opposite end in the clear and calm water has had nine, and this will be the 15th up here. Now, I will put that around about with this one circa 60 pound i reckon speed is on 40 45 pound van der fleet in the middle 30 odd pound well i can see that um nick speed's just landed another fish and so this is going to be a bit of a battle either end here it does it's look good up here it really yeah. does that's, yeah, that's a decent fish that's a six pound fish that one but it's just again you've got a nice ripple coming in the wind just blowing gently into it and that's where the fish like to be as a rule. It's got a nice margin on that far side as well. It drops down pretty steep. There's a nice little mud line, a few reeds. Yeah, I mean, it's a lovely chuck for, for, the, uh, for the feeder. And then late on, Matt's gonna go down that edge and uh, I can imagine he can put a good weight together here. Lake five now, and it's another end peg that seems to be doing the damage. Scott Puddy on the far side there. He's having a bit of a good day down there, isn't he? Yeah, I've seen him catch a few fish, and uh, as I say, it's flat calm. He's got pretty much the same sort of peg as Nick Speed has got on, um, on Lake four. So flat calm, fishing tight up against the edge, and he's catching plenty of fish. Absolutely. Well, the tree that we can see just behind Scott there is the tree that is directly behind Nick Speed, so they are more or less yeah. identical. And these two ponds, four and five, are right next door to each other. Similar level, similar fish, similar water level, wind direction doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. And if next door is anything to go by, then it's going to be each end of the pond that should be doing the business. Yeah, we're going to get pretty much the same sort of action on this lake as the other one, pretty much mirror images of each other. There is a fly in the ointment on this one, and that's the man next door to Scott, and that man is Johnny Arthur. Now, Johnny Arthur is arguably one of the most dangerous anglers in the UK scene. He's won this championship three times. Scott's just landed that fish there. They look slightly smaller than next door. Yeah. But we'll just talk back about John Arthur. He's won this three times. Nobody's ever won it four. He's not on the best peg on this section, no. but I would never, ever write John off. No, I mean, we spoke to the local experts before the match and they were saying that this was going to be an area where there are a lot of fish so we're just looking across the lake now and there are three anglers on the far side all of them playing fish and this really does seem to be where the action's at at the moment elsewhere i'm not going to say it's been patchy but it's been sporadic and as we look right there's a, a little bit of a bigger fish being played there there's light pole elastic and it's i think it's on its way to derby that one it looks like it it's certainly uh I think he's getting it, he's coming back slowly, but I think it's decided to go down the edge and, uh, and stay there. Oh, he's got it out now, he's oh, coming that's not in too now. Bad. I was looking at it a minute ago and it was right down under those overhanging fronds yeah, it there. It was right into that, wasn't it? So, uh, where it could have been dangerous, but it's out in open water now, so uh, he looks like he's winning the, that battle. Meanwhile, elsewhere around the lake, plenty of fish being caught. Yeah, that side, that side of the lake does seem to be a bit more action than this side of the lake, certainly, but... Uh, Come on, Ken, we're rooting for you here, mate. Don't let that float fly past your ear, whatever you do. He's had it close a few times, right? This is as close as he's had it. It's there. Well done, Ken. Oh, that's got a proper tail on that's it, That's a big it? fish. <laughs> that's a good £15, that fish. Absolutely. Nice one, Ken. We salute you. <laughs> On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries, angling in the northwest. 
Resta Gamakatsu, sponsors of the UK Angling Championships. I'm Perry Stone. I fish at the highest level in match fishing. I cannot afford to lose any fish. That is why I use Gamagatsu hooks. They're pin sharp, they don't blunt, and they are simply the best. Cresta Gamakatsu, sponsors of the UK Angling Championships. On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries. Angling in the Northwest. Halfway stage in the game now, and it's been a really interesting one. This it started as most competitions do, bit of a spurt, bit of a flurry of activity. They settle in to their positions, and then we see the race develop. Lake one, your man seems to be in pole position. Well, he was when we left him. He was on seven, eight fish, uh, peg thirty, lake one, catching well as I anticipated he would. Um, but uh, there's a lot of other lakes where there's a lot of fish being caught. Yeah, yeah, it's not necessarily going to be the match win up there, is it? Two and three, I think they were slow. That is pretties and uglies. Didn't seem to be a lot happening. Lake two, I can't call. Lake three, looking at it, I think it's either going to be Mike McMillan or alternatively Tommy Pickering. They seem to be the two at each end of the island that have got the head screwed on the most. And if, look, let's face it, if Andy Power is scratching his head, there's a problem. Yeah, Andy Power off his box, changing his rigs, so something's not right, but we didn't see a lot of fish caught on that lake. As I say, it seemed to be a bit of a waiting game on two and three. Um, lake four behind us now, catching a lot of fish on lake at uh, either end. Yeah, this is the one, isn't it? You've got uh, old Matt Goodall at the top end on the end of the wind up there. He's absolutely sacking him up on the bomb and pellet. Opposite end, and I'm looking over now, you've got Nick Speed. He's actually playing one as we speak. So real nip and tuck battle between those two. Yeah, both ends, t two totally different pegs, one flat, one windy, two totally different methods. Matt's on the bomb, yep. Nick's on the long pole down the edge. I tell you what is interesting to me, you've got leg five, which is just over the back there, which is almost identical to this. Same size, same width, same length, 20 yards that way. And we've got the guy at this end of the lake, Scott Puddy, that is in the lead. He's doing exactly the same as Nick Speed, isn't he? Yep, they're fishing basically what is exactly the same peg. They're yeah. fishing exactly the same method, so by design, the same result, catching lots of fish. Incredible, isn't it, that two obviously good anglers have both come up with the same tactic to do the same thing. If you took the one lake and put it on top of the other one, it would almost look like a tracing paper, yeah. and they're doing the same thing. So yeah. really, really interesting. Tactic. Yeah, you can't tell those two pegs apart, yeah. but uh, they're both catching loads of fish. Look, it's been slow, it's starting to speed up. We've got another few lakes to go around now, but what's going to happen through the rest of this event is it's just going to get better and better and better. Remember, this is five hours long. Most matches are four. We run late as well. We're running between five and six. Normally, they finish by five. That last hour is always a brilliant race. Weather getting better, light dropping, wind quite nice at the moment. It'll yeah. be a big one. Exactly. There's going to be a big wait. And the last two hours of this match are going to be absolutely crucial. Lister now, corner, end peg on Lake 8. He's having a good day, Stuart. He's caught quite a few now, hasn't he? Some big carp as well. Yeah, I spoke to Stuart earlier and he was admitting to £40. Um, and then he landed a eight, nine pounder, so he was on 50. And uh, yeah, he's catching down the edge at 14 and a half metres and uh, having a great day. On the worm by the look of that there. Good old carp bait, isn't it? That? He absolutely love it this time of year. Yeah, ground bait and worms, you can't beat it down the edge. Once the uh, water warms up, they love it. Let's just have a little look now at Stuart's plan. So, just a small cup, small pot. Yeah, got a small toss pot full of ground bait. Nice big dendrobina worm on the hook. Fishing about 24 inches deep. Maybe a little bit less. How tight is he going to be getting in there? He's going to be pushing right in. The float will be tight and then he'll just roll it up the. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll just roll it up, pull it up the bank so the float's tight and he's fishing against the shelf. Drop some ground bait in. And the plan is the float goes under now, Rob. <laughs> There's a little giggle from the, uh, from the box in front of us there. Oh, that hasn't worked. Yeah, it's amazing. Sometimes you think there's no fish there and then other times you drop the float in and it just goes straight away. But there's a fish there because the float's moving around. Lake Nine now and this is the man that I've put my money on. This is Chris Barley. He's on the end peg, 129, Lake Nine. He's no slouch, this fella. He can catch a few. He likes it here as well and he is an absolute master at putting together big bags of fish and he's already into a carp. Yeah, Chris Barley's a big fish uh, weight expert, you know, fish's decoy. He's into a fish now. Um, if he's catching well down that edge, then he will put a big weight together. And I believe he's your bet to uh, win the match. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, yeah. This, as soon as I saw where he'd got, I thought, you know what? It's a good peg with a very good angler on it. Yeah. And, you know, it was a cross between this. Nick Speed is obviously another good call uh, down on there. If we're looking at end pegs and we're looking at good anglers, then there's two very good anglers on two very good end pegs. But for me, It'll be interesting to see what the size of fish are in this pond because if they're smaller, you know, he's going to get the bites, but will he put enough weight together to get the whole match? I think he'll probably win the section. Yeah, he's, it's, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's a, they're decent sized fish. That's two, like, two and three pounds. Yeah, maybe, that's but. three pounds, but if he's getting them in, you know, every minute and a half, then, you know, he's going to put a big weight together. Um, he's just fishing the, exactly the same way down the edge, bit of ground bait on a little pot and, uh, and catching fish. Yeah, right down in the opposite corner again, and it does seem to be corners and ends that are doing the business. We yeah. see a fish being played. This was always going to be the case, really, Rob, uh, if uh, the edges were are good on all these lakes. So if you're on the end and you've got the edges to fish, you're always on for a big weight. And that's John Dryden down there on the end peg, just about to net one. Peg 120. Then next to John, we've got Lee Blagden, also into fish. Lee's catching on the feeder. It's the same again, Rob, you know, people catching. He's actually catching on the pellet waggler. He's had that fish. Yes. It's not a big fish, though, um, from in the scheme of things. Let's just have a little look at Chris Barley's float up there. and You can see the movement in that peg there, absolutely ravenous on it now. Yeah. I think... What Chris is doing there is he's he's waiting and making sure it's a positive bite as opposed to a liner, yes. so he doesn't foul hook him. And the other end pegs in again. That's uh, game on. Yeah, it's got a uh, repeat process. Chris is very very good at getting these fishing quickly. Yes. So if he can get the bites quicker, there's no question about how fast that he can get those fishing. It's not a big one, pound and a half, two pound, but you know what? It's another fish. Yeah. Chris is used to catching 400 pound weights, so uh, he's a big weight specialist angler. John Dryden back in the chair over there again, similar sort of thing that he's doing down the edge. He's got a lovely margin down there. Reeds, wind, but once again, slightly smaller fish. Yeah, they look slightly smaller on this lake than most of the other lakes that we've seen, to be fair, but, uh, but it may be there are bigger fish in here and they'll feed in that last hour. And if you can put some some of those big fish together, you can put a really big weight together. Leg six now, and we're looking all the way at the very top end, the distance, the man in white up there, Steve Jopp. And Unfortunately, we can't get round to him because of the way that everything is pegged, but he's having a whale of a time at the moment. He's catching quite a few up there. Yeah, it looks a really nice peg up there. You can see the scum on the water, so it tells you that the wind's been blowing up there. Um, and yeah, he's been catching a lot. But Dave Swain down uh, on the other end peg, once again, end pegs dominating, Rob. And uh, he's, uh, he said to me earlier, he said, I've had 11 and I've lost 20. Oh my word, yeah, so he's been foul looking a few, he's isn't he? He's been looking quite a lot of fish. Definitely a lot of fish around in these corners at the moment. That, that looks a big fish that Steve Jopp's got on because that looks like proper elastic he's using. It looks like he's towing that one in. The tugboat is on its way into the harbour of Jopp. Landing net is out. Is he going to get it big? Well, oh, he's chip shot that one in. Look, that's a frying pan two-hander there. As that's 
will be a, a big fish. Yeah, that's a now. heavy fish. He's lent forward to pick. You know, normally yeah, though. Big, yeah, that's a landing net breaker. That one. Yeah, definitely. Now this is a man that you would never ever bet against, Jace Lebosque, who has got an end peg. Not only has he got an end peg, but there are two pegs next door to him that are empty, so he's almost on his own. It, phenomenal angler, former champion. I was having a chat this morning, I've known Jace for a long time, he's a, an immensely talented angler. And he sort of fell out of love with it for a little bit, and he decided not to do so much last year. And he said this year is one of the first times that he's picked his kit back up again. But just look at him, he's straight back into it, that competitive edge is there. I've got to say, if he's in form, this is a decent peg. He's another one that I would fancy for an overall placing. Yeah, he looks like he's in the zone. He's he's, fe he's fed both of his swims while he's playing that fish, and he, he looks like he's right in the zone. A lot of people don't realise the amount of time and effort it takes to be competitive at this level. You know, the amount of hours that people spend on their equipment and getting it just right for this, the, exactly these sort of competitions. Absolutely. Well, he's netted that one. Yeah. And that's a six pound fish all day. Yeah, it's uh, just going back to what you were saying there again, you know, the, the prep at any, any sport, any elite level sport, you've got to be totally on your game, haven't you? And if you're an athlete, you're putting a lot of practice time in. If you're an angler, you're putting a lot of practice time in. But it's more than that, it's the prep. It's the thinking about it, it's the communications, it's all of these things that go with it. And you know, you see the guys that are at the top of the game, you just touched on it there, they're in the zone. And you can see the lads that are absolutely in the zone. And when they're like that, you know what? It's almost like that fighter's eye when a boxer has got it in his eye that he is not going to be beaten. On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries. Angling in the Northwest. On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries. Angling in the Northwest. Sometimes the more you pull these fish, the more they pull back. Sometimes it's better just to settle them down, which is exactly what he's going to do. And you'll see he's just letting the pole do elastic do the work. He's going to feed his swim. That's confidence. Yeah, he's completely confident in what he's doing. You watch how quick this comes in now. As soon as you know it goes on that first run, we all have our eyebrows somewhere over the back of our heads as we're looking at that pole on full extension, the elastic on full extension. It comes under control as soon as it's back in. He's really quick getting them in. Yeah. And now it's not doing a lot now, and he'll just pull it. He's got these elastic on a puller kit and he'll just keep pulling it and pulling it and it's coming in and when he gets an opportunity to net it he'll take that but nice and smooth you know he's not doing anything at a rush it's all nicely nice and smooth and another good fish first time in no messing no mess Jason Lebosque that is a perfect demonstration of how to catch fish yeah. and that's 12 13 pound in five minutes five minutes yeah Let's have a look elsewhere now, and this is a man that's been around competition for a long, long time and no stranger to big pressured events as well. Steve Cook, been in Fishermania quite a few times. Yeah, Steve's fished a lot of the big qualifiers and he's, uh, he's well known on the match circuit. And uh, down the fishing down the edge, uh, same as all the anglers now are all fishing down the edge into that last hour, uh, looking to add 
a, a real amount of weight uh, quickly. There's a bit of talent down here, and I'm going to be very kind to these gentlemen with the with the older statesmen. They are elder statesmen, but I tell you what, you don't want to sit next to them in a fishing match most of the time because they'll batter you. Wily old foxes, aren't they? Cookie, look at the speed of Cookie there, straight in, big pile of bait going in there. So we're back with your man down at the bottom end of Lake One. Ward has had a blinder of a match so far and we think that he might well be up there not just winning the section but also potentially winning a match. It's going to be close, you know, as I say, with 50 odd minutes to go he was admitting to 125 he had. So we're now sort of getting towards the end of the match. He said he's caught steady but his Callum Dix on 27 has been catching really well short. Unfortunately, he's lost a few as well as Callum. He's had, a, he's had a bad start. He's had a great middle bit. One or two have dropped off, but you know, you've only got to give Callum a sniff of fish and he's on him like a shot. Uh, this, is the, this is the big question here, Rob, is do I pull it harder and get it in quick or...? No, it's too late. He's not going to get another bite now, I think. He's no, he's got a minute and ten seconds left. One minute ten. I think if he's got that minute, he's got a chance to get another He's got bite. a minute left, but... Uh, and on the landing net. This is the international inning, he wants it in. Yeah, he wants it in, he's got 25 seconds. Is he going to get it back out and get a bite in the dying seconds it's of where this that competition? If he can get that hook out quickly, he's just going to leave the... He'll leave the fish between his legs, ship out. He's got 11 seconds. He's got 10 seconds now to get a bite. He hopes he's got a heavy rig on to get down quick. Five, four, three, two, one. All out! And there it is, round one is over. That was a gripping finish, just watching the speed merchant that is Callum Dix just trying to get that fish in and another one hooked before the end. It didn't come to fruition. But there's a smile on his face as he comes up. He's happy with the one he got in. It's going to be a close battle down here. The big question now is what will the scalesman find out? Here it is, first way of the day, and we're starting off with the man that we think might be in a position for the overall win. Ward Burkill. Peg 30, he's had an absolutely fantastic day so far. Okay. So this is going to be two ways now. We'll split that net into two bags. £52.5 is the first way. Some decent fish in this one. It's been a carp corner for sure. That'll do. Let's have a look at what we've got there. The fish safely on the mat. 52 was the first one. 59 pound. 59 pound exactly for the second one. That makes 111 pound five ounces so far. Yeah, but there's a silver, there's only a couple of pounds of silver in there. Yeah. 7.11. 7 pound 11 ounces. So 148.11 is the score to beat at the moment. 141.14 is Callum Dixon. He has more to come in here. He's going to have passed that. 19 pounds 2 ounces. 19 pounds 2 ounces. That makes that 161 pounds exactly. 161. New leader, Callum Dix, 161. Weight's dropping down slightly as we move up this stretch of the lake. 56.05 is Kaylee's current weight, 62.06 to beat for the section lead. And we expect that the weights will drop slightly further back as we go further up the section because the fish have been down on this wind. That's a decent net there. There's going to be 40, maybe a little bit more than that in there. And 
up it comes. Final way, Kaylee Smith. Ten. Forty-seven pounds ten ounces. One hundred and three pounds fifteen ounces. Kaylee Smith takes the lead in the section. We know that Nick Speed has weighed in one hundred and forty-two oh three. It wasn't enough to take the overall match win, but it certainly is enough at the moment to be leading the section. And this is the man that can challenge him for that title. It needs to be seventy-five. There or thereabouts. It's going to be close. This looks like it's a big net. What's the exact weight it needs to be? 75 something? 76. Needs to be around about 75-ish pounds to take the lead. Let's have a look. What's it going to do? It's bouncing around there. It looks like it might have just done it. It's 77. Seventy-seven ten. Seventy-seven ten. It's close. I think it's just over. One hundred and forty-four fifteen. One hundred and forty-four fifteen. Two pounds and a little bit of change difference. That's one fish. And if you think this match has been five hours long, this battle was decided by one fish. As the scalesmen travelled round the competitors and the results came in, it was clear that the Glebe had lived up to expectations and there were some brilliant weights. Quite a few of the favourites were in contention for overall honours and a big check, but with all the results in, it was former champion Jason Labosque who took the win, just ahead of former England international Callum Dix. The third podium place went to the ever impressive Scott Puddy. So with round one now completed, the front runners in the championship look like this. A who's who of match fishing greatness, including two former UK champs, a Fishermania champ and two England internationals. Well, Jace, that was a performance and a half. You got run round a bit as well. I did, mate, yeah. Um, to be fair, I started on quite heavy, a bit heavier elastic and the first three or four fish I've hooked, I've sort of gone mental. So I just thought I've scaled down, fish lighter elastic, but it, I did forgot how hard they pulled it. I didn't realise they pulled that hard, to be fair. Yeah, we, well, we saw you into a few of them and they weren't off going like trains, weren't they? You were right on the limit a few times. I was, 14 and a half, and I could just feel them bottoming my elastic as well. But luckily, when they've got to the far bank round the corner, they've come back, so it's it's been all right. There wasn't a lot further for them to go, was there? There wasn't, mate. They, they ended up with you, I think, yeah. with the camera. Absolutely. Now, you've been you've been off the box for a while, haven't you? You've just got back into the saddle again. I have. I've been... I've been doing odd little, you know, matches here and there, but nothing sort of on the big sort of scene, if you like. Um, just lost my mojo a little bit for it, but hopefully this will get it back. Got back in again now. That's a nice start to a new campaign, surely? It is. A few quid towards me holiday and uh, a point on the board. So that's it, the end of round one. And what a day it's been. What an absolutely fantastic competition it's been up here. We've had drama, we've had action, we've had a little bit of a twist in the tail at the end of the competition. And you know what? We've got a race leader, Jason Labosque, back in the saddle after a while out. This has been a brilliant day, round two. That's going to be an exciting one as well. Gamakatsu, sponsors of the UK Angling Championships. On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries. Angling in the Northwest.
Well, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you want to see more from me and my pals, of course, there is loads of it. But the first thing you've got to do is get down there, see that big red button, subscribe to us. And at the same time, please do give us a thumbs up. In the meantime, loads and loads of films over there. So get watching. We'll see you in the next one.